So today we're going to talk about standards of medicine. And um, this discussion should give you a little bit of perspective regarding how standards are developed. This is the U.S. Pre uh, Preventive Services Task Force. Uh, they are the uh, ultimate governmental standards uh, body for preventive medicine. When I was in Hopkins in the mid-80s, uh, my, that's when the feds developed this program, this uh, task force. Uh, my residents developed and wrote the background papers. There was a background paper for each of the um, preventive services like uh, baby aspirin uh, to prevent heart attack, and stroke, um, uh, EKG, when to do that on a preventive basis, basically never. Um, um, stress test, again, way, way overdone. So the residents did the uh, work in terms of reviewing the literature, presented it to the committee of experts. They massaged the information and made basic decisions regarding what to do. Now, here we are 30 years later, and instead of one background document, again, you see this is the uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. You, you can Google it and find it. I'm going to get into some of the detail, which, again, I think overall the detail will help you understand why it's so difficult for um, docs to follow the standards, uh, for the public to understand the standards. Then I'll give you a little bit of logic at the end, the actual, uh, 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 the logic behind the interpretation, and then the PrevMed logic. So again, this is where this is going. What it does, it'll help you understand how the standards are written, how they're interpreted, and um, what to do about uh, applying those standards to your own health care. Uh, but before we do, Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, -E um, PrevMed. Uh, we help folks prevent all the bad stuff, cancer, heart attack, stroke, uh, dementia. <clears throat> so, again, Google USP, uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force Guidelines on Aspirin for Prevention of Heart Attack. Aspirin use... Uh, to prevent heart, cardiovascular disease and colorectal cancer. Actually, I'm not going to get into the prevention of colorectal cancer uh, part of this because, again, as you'll see, it's complicated enough to just um, look at the cardiovascular piece. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when, we, when the Fed started this program and we started helping them, uh, we would basically do a simple... 15 page background document. As you see here, there are uh, what, over a dozen background documents for each of these now. Now, let's go back and look, well, let's just look at some of the titles on there. Uh, final Research Plan Aspirin to Prevent Cardiovascular Disease, Final Research Plan Aspirin to Prevent Cancer, Final, uh, final Evidence Review Aspirin to Prevent Cancer and Harms of uh, Aspirin. Final Evidence Review, Aspirin to Prevent Cancer, Colorectal Cancer, Modeling Report, uh, Evidence Summary, Aspirin to Use to Prevent Cancer, Cardiovascular Events, etc., and Decision Analysis. So again, it gets deep, it gets bureaucratic. Um, at the end of the day, docs are supposed to be aware of this and figure out what to do with it. Now... <clears throat> I'll get to that interpretation in just a minute. But let's just look at a couple of the recommendations that they have here. So here they say adults age 50 to 59 with a greater than 10% 10-year cardiovascular uh, disease risk. Well, how do you define that? Uh, well, again, if they're 50 to 59... Then you go in, you do uh, one of the surveys, uh, it's a history survey regarding their risk, their uh, family risk, their diet, their BMI, uh, things like that to look and see what their uh, risk is over the next 10 years of having heart attack or stroke. Once you complete that, then you decide whether or not to recommend 
uh, baby aspirin for the patient. Now this is the next one, and that's for patients 60 to 69. Again, slightly different uh, set of um, decision calculus here. This one, adults under, the, under age 50, and this one, adults over age uh, 69. In both of these, they say there's insufficient evidence to make a recommendation. So, <clears throat> in other words, you're on your own there. Now, <clears throat> I said a minute ago, it's kind of difficult for a doc to take this and interpret it. Um, so I went to Medscape. That's a place where you find a lot of um, a lot of docs trying to help each other understand medicine. Uh, aspirin for primary prevention, 2016 uh, U.S. PSTF uh, recommendations. And this is Dr. Um, Kenneth Lynn. He's an MD, MPH. The MPH indicates he's been trained in prevention pretty well. And he's at Georgetown. So again, great university, uh, good training in um, prevention. So here's his view. Since uh, 2009, the USP, uh, the Preventive Services Task Force has recommended that we encourage men age 45 to 79. Now, did you get that out of there? I didn't either, but I think it's in some of those background documents that we didn't review. And women age 55 to 79 um, to take aspirin. Un if they have don't have known heart disease and they have a greater than 10% 10-year risk. So his, part, his point, and, and again, is very valid. Uh, in practice, I've found this recommendation very challenging um, to implement. Well, I can understand that now, can't you? Actually, I've lived this before. I understood it a long time ago. Um, it requires using one or two different calculators to estimate the 10-year heart attack or stroke risk, then consulting a table that compares those cardiovascular uh, events to the amounts prevented um, by the bleeding harm associated with this. So some patients will have offsetting risks requiring uh, clinicians to figure out what to do next. So, again, that gives you some perspective on the standards. Now, let me go back, as I mentioned earlier, and give you a little bit of uh, perspective regarding the clinical logic and the standards we use at PrevMed. We actually use the ones that were developed by Bale and Donin, uh, Brad Bale, Amy Donin, in their book, um, uh, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. There's a simple. If you have plaque, then you need baby aspirin. If you don't have plaque, it doesn't matter what age you are, you don't need baby aspirin because uh, heart attacks are caused by um, hot plaque that uh, gets released into the body or inflamed plaque. Well, if you don't have any plaque, there's no, you're not going to have any hot plaque. And there's nothing for your immune system to attack. So, um, again, just to go through the, the decision calculus from a, from a logic perspective, according to the doc there at, um, I think it's Ken, um, <clears throat> Kenny Lynn, the uh, MPH trained doc at Georgetown, Here's the logic that he got out of the US, the Preventive Services Task Force. If male, 45 to 79, or female, 55 to 79, and known, no known cardiovascular disease, and 10 year risk is greater than 10%, then baby aspirin. And again, Bale Deneen or PrevMed, if plaque, then baby aspirin. I went on to define, well, how do you define plaque? Well, if it's, uh, you have a CIMT greater than 1.3 uh, millimeters, in other words, a cardi um, carotid intima media thickness test, and see other videos, we've got those on the CIMT, 
or a positive coronary artery calcium score. So that's an either or, and again, those we've done plenty of videos on. We also add a consultation regarding the aspirin works logic. I've done a video on that as well. Um, <clears throat> aspirin works is based on the uh, knowledge that there's a prostaglandin that is created by um, the body, which uh, encourages uh, clotting. That's actually how aspirin works. It decreases the production of that prostaglandin. Certain of us uh, metabolize uh, aspirin uh, in ways different than others. Therefore, if uh, we still have that uh, prostaglandin in our urine, the baby aspirin is not having a preventive effect. Now, so we had, what we do regarding aspirin works is we uh, educate our patient, and if the patient selects, uh, wants to get that test, we will do that. The recommendation is if the aspirin works comes back positive, that they take two baby aspirin rather than one. Now, we also educate them to the fact that the literature is very clear about all of that up to that point with aspirin, baby aspirin, but it's not so clear that actually taking that second aspirin uh, has the intended effect. I think it's because there's not enough research around that area, but again, that's why you see um, a lot of folks ignoring um, baby as I mean, uh, ignoring uh, aspirin works as a test. We just uh, make our patients aware and let them of uh, the pros and cons and, and uh, let them choose. We also make our uh, recommendation. Now, <clears throat> I've covered a whole lot of information very, uh, very quickly. Again, if you've made it to this part of the uh, presentation, thank you very much. The overall uh, goal was to help you understand how the preventive uh, standards are written for the for this country and how they might differ uh, uh, here at PrevMed and in other prevention areas. Thank you.